Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson for Beyond Solitaire, and I'm here with Jason Perez of Shell Stories and the One Stop Co-op Shop, and we're doing something we haven't done in forever, which is co-review a game. Uh, so how you doing, Jason? Yo, my hot peoples, what's up? Uh, good to be back, Liz. Yes, and so we are back with a, a traditional game for us to review together, uh, because we love the Oniverse, so we are going to talk today about Siberion. And this is the most recent installment in the Oniverse. I'm going to cut away to show you how it plays right now, and then we'll be back for some final thoughts. All right, gamers, so here is a setup of Siberion. This is the most recent installment in Shadi Torbay's Oniverse series. And this one is about robots repairing machines in a factory that has got a little bit out of sorts. The object of this game is that we're gonna take these robots, we're gonna use the robots to fix these machines, and we have a very limited amount of time in which to do so. In order to win, we need to completely deplete this machine deck, fix every machine, uh, but we have to do that within two cycles through this deck. So basically, once we go through this deck one time, we'll reshuffle, we'll have no battery left, and we'll have one more run through the deck. So how are we going to manage it? Uh, well, basically, we're going to have turns where we have a few options for actions that we can take. And those options are always going to be repair, trigger, and upgrade. So repair is basically what you think it means we repair the machines. How do we do that? Well, we need to meet the demands that are on the bottom of each of the machines in order to fix them. So this one needs two fives, two purples, two threes, two fours, two greens, and we'll get some other combinations as we dig further into the deck. These are just the level one cards. So each of the robot cards gives us a bit of information about itself. We have a color that's associated with a symbol. The symbols will be associated with repair costs and also with skills, which we're about to get to. There's also going to be a robot in the top right corner with a number in it, and the numbers are going to tell you what your options are when you're trying to repair. So if I wanted to, I could discard these two fours, four and four, to repair this machine. This would go into my experience pile. These would go into discard. As you might have guessed, this is a pretty difficult thing to do, especially because if I don't manage to repair a machine on my turn, then I'm gonna have to spend a failsafe token. If I don't repair any machines on my turn and I don't have a failsafe token, then I lose. So we're gonna have to be pretty efficient about this. And that is where triggering and upgrades come in. So. The colors of each of these robots are also associated with a specific skill, uh, as denoted on this little skill track up here. At the beginning of the game, our skills are very depleted. We don't really have any. Uh, we're really out of sorts. The devious cog has really gotten to us. But as we progress through the game, we're going to be able to upgrade these skills and they get more powerful as we go. So if you want to trigger a skill, you basically discard a robot card that's of the associated color uh, with the skill that you want to trigger. Before you can really trigger any skills, though, you're going to need to upgrade them. To upgrade your skills, you're going to need to spend machine cards that you've already fixed in order to gain that skill. So fixing machines essentially gives you experience, and then you can spend your experience points to upgrade your skills, which you can then trigger uh, by discarding your cards instead of just doing the robot cost or the symbol on them to repair machines. So basically, in order to upgrade, you need to spend repaired machine cards uh, in the amount of the level that your skill is currently on. So for example, these are all level one, so I need to spend one of my machine cards to level up one skill. If I wanna go from level two to three, I need to spend two cards to go from two to three. I need to spend three cards to get from three to four. So upgrading can be very expensive. It is also highly worth it based on what those upgrades are getting you. So just a quick overview of the skills. Up top with that bell, we have the siren bot. What that lets you do is draw robots from the deck and then put them in this extra row up top called the flash. So this is just your regular main row uh, and it's called your platform. There's a row above this row that's called the flash where if you draw cards using your siren bot ability, you can put cards here that are only there until the end of your turn, but it might give you a little bit of extra spending power on top of the platform bots you already drew. There's also the stock bot. So that's the box that has a downward pointing arrow it's the blue one. What that does is it lets you take cards from your platform and put them in what's called the stock. 
So basically, if I trigger that ability, then I can store cards. And unlike the flash cards, which leave at the end of your turn, these stay from turn to turn. So you can get yourself like a little storehouse of useful cards to deploy against the machines as you're trying to fix them. The Cyclobot lets you retrieve one robot card from the discard pile, which is why you start the game with a discard pile, even at setup. And you get more choices about your retrieval when you have a more upgraded version of the skill. Likewise, as you upgrade these skills, you get to put more cards in the flash or in the stock. Next, we have our plan bot. The plan bot lets you look at the top cards of the robot deck and then manipulate where they go, the order they're in, whether at the top or the bottom. And then, of course, you can look at and reorder more cards if you have upgraded the skill more. Then you've also got the command bot, and it lets you prep one of your machines. So you have to discard extra robots to do it, but you could basically prep a machine and then spend one less robot. So it's basically a way, if you don't have the symbols you need, to discard robot cards and only get partway there, but still complete the repair. And that is truly it. So you do your turn where you can repair machines, you can trigger your skills, or you can upgrade your skills. Then after that, you do cleanup where you redraw, fill up your platform. And then if you haven't repaired any machines, you either spend one of these tokens or you lose. So it's a simple, nasty little puzzle that is really, really gonna put you on a tight timer. So that is the base game. Let's go ahead and talk very briefly about the expansions. There are several as is typical of an Oniverse game and they're all quite cool. So with the baby bots, we have these adorable little baby robot cards. I just think they're so cute, actually. Cuter than human children, for sure. <laughs> These adorable little baby bots. So basically, you have an extra action, uh, which is that you can make a baby bot. You have to make all the baby bots in order to win when you're playing in this mode, because as Shadi Torbay always does, he gives a little, he takes a little. But once these baby bots have gone into your deck, then you are able to use them to upgrade your skills faster. So the baby bots are handy, uh, they're cute, and they're a fun little tricky addition to gameplay. The next expansion we're gonna talk about is the Gigantobots. The Gigantobots are interesting because they let you get more failsafe tokens, but they also add structural damage to the forge that you have to repair. In order to repair that damage, you have to deploy some of your robots to board and then pilot the Gigantobots, uh, but they could also end up on vacation. So you have to be careful about uh, making sure they're there when you really need them. They do look so cute on vacay though. So the Gigantobots are hilarious because basically you can deploy your robots to pilot other robots in order to repair damage. Uh, that said, these guys are really powerful. They do cool stuff and there's some really nice rewards for these, but they also have some structural damage that you have to repair or else you are penalized and you may not win the game over it. So whatever you add in, you wanna make sure that you handle it properly because shoddy gives, shoddy takes. The next expansion is called Microbots. And basically what this does is it causes you to put these extra conditions on the cards. So these are the conditions for repair right now. Microbots add additional ones. However, when you're successful, you get to actually keep the Microbot tokens. You can only keep a certain number, but you can then use these uh, for your own purposes once you have acquired them. So the Microbots are initially super irritating because you have to cope with them. But then once you get them in, you can use them for yourself. They're pretty great. The fifth expansion is called the Multibots. These are like Schrodinger's bot. You know, what symbol might they have? What number might they have? I don't know. You can make decisions about that as you play them. They're very flexible. But in order to play with these, you have to add level three machine cards to the deck. So it's a bunch more cards that are more difficult. So these make things easier because they're more flexible, but you have to have harder cards in your deck in order to compensate for that. And then the last expansion is called the Devious Cog. Uh, and that is where you place these little chits underneath your little skill trackers up here. And when you try to trigger skills, you have to pull one of these instead. And so you might be trying to trigger a red skill, but instead you do a blue one and you actually don't know what you're going to end up with. So this is sort of hilarious because maybe you'll help yourself, but maybe not in the way that you wanted to, or maybe you'll do exactly what you didn't want to do. The outcomes get a lot shakier when you're playing with Devious Cog. And I personally find that very funny. So that is Siberion. I've given a brief overview of the game and a quick treatment of each of the expansions that are in the box. If you wanna see full play with all the expansions, I'm gonna direct you to Jason's video on One Stop Co-op Shop, which I've linked in the show notes. And for now, let's see what Jason and I thought about Siberion. All right, so now for some final thoughts. Jason, um, what do you got any thoughts about Siberion since everybody just heard me talk for several minutes? 
<laughs> uh, okay, so Siberian. Uh, I'm of two minds about this game. Uh, I'm of a mind when it comes to the base game, and I'm of a mind when it comes to starting to add in the expansions. And then if people watch my content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, I like to play the big game with all the expansions, uh, which is not something that people like to play. I always get those comments like, I can't believe you did that. Uh, <laughs> usually it's either one or two or just the base game. Uh, so let's just talk about the base game first. Uh, what do you think? I, I, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm being hesitant over here, so I, I'll just, I'll just kind of put my cards on the table. Didn't love just the base game. So, what, what do you think about it? I actually liked it just fine, although I do agree that it's better with expansions. So, I'm more positive on the base game than you. Uh, but you know, I don't think that that's its best incarnation, uh, as it were. Right. I will say, I, I mean, really okay, liked, so, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I really liked the play options. Like, I liked that you could have multi-use cards. I love mm-hmm. multi-use cards. I liked the um, ability to upgrade different little powers that you could then use. I liked that the bots that you fixed became useful in the game because of those abilities. Like, there's just lots of little interlocking things that I thought were really pleasing um, right. about base Siberian. And so that was what I really liked. So Okay. I'll get the, the stuff I don't like out of the way. So I think that the symbol matching is tough. Uh, and especially early... So the move is obvious, right? It's like you, you have a right. match, you do the match. And if you don't do the match, then, you know, uh, and, and you end up doing some suboptimal some thing that, that makes you feel terrible. Uh, and then the way the game is structured, you know, so you have those upgrade paths, but you don't get the upgrades early, right? Mm, uh, yeah. So at the very beginning, you got, you really kind of have nothing. Like you have those multi-use cards, but they're not multi-use at the beginning because you got to unlock that. Uh, and then the initial powers are, uh, you know, they, they tend to, I don't know. Like, I mean, they're they're enough to play, but they're not like gonna blow you away. You don't really get to the fun multi-use until like the very end when you've really leveled and you feel good about uh you know playing your cards. So it takes a while, especially in, like I said, that base game, uh, to get going. And for an Oniverse game, I guess I'm used to kind of having that punch uh earlier, like okay, I'm feeling it and then I'm feeling it throughout the throughout the whole way. Siberian is definitely a ramp up, which is not bad, uh, but just to kind of give people a flag for uh, whatever. Um, on the good side, this is just, again, this is just the base game. Um, I think this game and Stellarion and, and in a way, Arion, like the later ones, I think they represent Shaddy kind of getting better, uh, in terms of tighter design. Uh, the, the game runs just on a mechanical level far more smoothly. Like, I just feel like, you know, I go in there and I know I'm going to get this really tight, um, play tested and just smooth running thing where in the earlier games i'm thinking you know like uh sylveon or you know a couple of the earlier ones rough right i mean uh i, I have a feeling that if shoddy went back to design those earlier ones they'd look different yeah right and okay, these ones see, are like okay yeah work on these mm-hmm. so like, well, no, uh, getting better so like so having said that like even though i had a, a difficulty with the way that the game ramps up, I feel like the game doesn't give you enough early to feel great. It's still well made. So if people, you know, are into that, you start, you know, small, and then you're you're okay ramping up. Like you're in for something that's actually just super smooth and real and fun if you like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not that it's a bad game, but I think I, I totally see your point about the engine taking too many tries to turn over. Yeah, like it just it takes a second to get started with this one. And so, yeah, I, I, if you don't, yeah, it's a, it's a cold Minnesota engine. <laughs> 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 then once it goes, you can go through all the snow, and you're gonna be fine. And you got four wheel right. drive. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the ramp up is maybe a bit a bit much. I can see, I can see that because the game is so short, it didn't really bother me right, too much. Exactly. But mm-hmm. yeah, if you want something with more punch, you're going to have to add the expansions. So there are several expansions for this game, as usual. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's see. We've got the baby bots. Ooh, baby. Baby. I like the baby bots. Every time I, every robots time I get. Love. Uh, um, so on the overview, you we went through all the individual expansions. Yeah. Okay. So like the, the yeah, you shuffle in the card. Uh, and then it pops up, and I just, I like, baby, I don't know. I just, I, I have to say that, even though I'm all, all, by, all by myself. Yeah, it's cute. I, I really liked that it, it, it follows these, these expansions follow like a very classic, like shoddy Torbay, like design yeah. where they give you something, they take something, they make right. something more interesting or powerful, they add a challenge. And mm-hmm. so I really liked that. 
Yeah, I, I think, and so like getting to that, my experience of like kind of shuffling two and three, all the expansions together, that's where I get the game really starts to hum. And especially speaking of that ramp up. So what I find, you know, because of the slow ramp up, the I'm going to take something and then give something. Well, usually in chatty games, you take something right now and then you earn the thing that they give you. So like the you're going to have this huge just wall of, oh, my God, I can't do anything at the beginning when you have those things. But he gives you support tokens, which here have that. It's it's one of the only times where Shadi's like, OK, have a support token just to kind of get you through. And so to yeah. play the harder game, I just like, all right, shuffle in all the support tokens. So with, with those and the support tokens are little examples of the powers that you eventually build up to. So it's like, OK, here's a little preview. and You get it for free. Uh, one of, you know, one copy of the five powers. With that, and with all the other options um, they shuffled in, I feel like I'm running like a little dashboard, which is what I'm supposed to feel like because I'm yeah. a, a me mechanical person and I'm, I'm like I'm fixing on an assembly line, so I, so it should feel like a little dashboard, and it does. Oh man, it's so fun! Like so, when we talked about um, reviewing this, I took it back out. So I'm like, okay, let me uh, show up my thoughts, and I'm just right. playing. It's like, wow, this is really fun. Uh, I'm just, well, pressing the button, it's like, okay, which what am I going to do now? This turn, I'm going to attend to the Giganta box. This turn, I'm going to, okay, shuffle a baby bot in. This turn, I have to sacrifice doing uh, this part of the game so I can accomplish that part of the game and I have my failsafe token. Da, 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 da. And I just feel like when you get, like, the game is fully itself. And it's mm -hmm. a bigger game. It's not a um, filler game at all. Like, that game takes an hour to play, which people don't yeah. want to play an hour only verse game, uh, which I understand, which is why people don't want to play a shuffle together game. But I'm already there as a solo player, just there. <laughs> it's already my <laughs> evening. Uh, so I am I go into it with a mindset of like, okay, I'm going to, this, is, this isn't this is just like a breezy 15-minute filler. And I don't need it to be a, a breezy 15-minute filler. The, the, the breezy 15-minute 15, 15 filler version of it, I'm not as satisfied by as yeah. the bigger game. So in terms of people's assessment, what 15-minute experience is going to satisfy you the most, my ranking for a cyber is a little bit lower but in terms of like i'm going to sit here for more time and i'm going to invest in something and it's going to be you know kind of a dashboardy fun thing whoa I, that not that one kind of raised it back up again so yeah a little bit of a, a so i'm not, i'm kind of i definitely have two minds when it comes to this one do you have a um a favorite expansion and a least favorite uh oh in terms of this the to siberian yeah yeah i i mean i think they're all i mean obviously the baby bots just kind of sing to me just um, I, I like the Come idea uh, in terms of like making this a deck management game. So like when you when you set aside cards and the Gigantic bots were similar to uh, the idea of like, OK, the so maybe that aspect of it, the kind of card setting aside and then they shuffle back in when you accomplish the thing. And so that opens up a lot of strategic uh, availability. So it's like, OK, I could use these cards now to fix this robot, but. If I set these cards aside and I leave the robot there, then I can fix the thing later and get my benefit now. So I love right. that choice. So like I guess that that feeling that that the, the baby bots and the gigantic bots give me of like setting aside cards and that can kind of like you know uh, manage my deck. Well, so this is a deck management game, a little bit like Stel uh, Stellarium, but but more kind of focused on board play and everything. Uh, so yeah, that experience was really fun, and just like everything else, sprinkles in. I, like the again, the, it comes together. Uh, and yeah. I know Shadi, it isn't just like five expansions and here you go. Like he makes them such that they do wrap in and they play yeah. with each other uh, when you want to. Yeah, I actually I thought the baby and Giganto bots were probably the highlight. I did enjoy the multi bots a lot. Um, yeah, just I yeah, you know. I think that's kind of like okay here it, that's like the more here have more Schrodinger's <laughs> bot. Um. Right. <laughs> uh, and then I thought the devious cog was really frustrating, but I also kind of liked it to be real. The Devious Cog, um, that one, you have to, like, it took me about five plays. And I know, you're not, you're, five plays is a lot for uh, a person. So that's just uh, a thing to know in and of itself. Like, it's going to take multiple plays to get into it uh, in terms yeah, of, like, really revealing what it is. And there's, be, there's many people out there that could be like, no, I'm good. <laughs> one or two plays and then needs to grab me and that's it. Uh, this is definitely a grower uh, in terms of, um, you know how much you're how much you're gonna enjoy this game if it isn't if you're not a person that's gonna give that investment and I totally that's like most people they need it they need it right there because there's a lot of games. Um, but uh, if you are a person that wants to kind of ease into a little bit, like uh, some something like Devious Cog would be a great example. So like 
now that I know how to play, I know how to play the devious cop. You know, right. uh, hold back and make sure that you're nice and leveled so that when you get the you know, the random uh, effect, then you can handle multiple outcomes at once. It isn't just one of those things where it's like, I'm going to play a card and see what happens. Woohoo! Yeah, that's not going to do. Like, there, there is a sense of planning even in that randomness that comes in yeah. there. So, yeah, I mean, this game is definitely rewards investment. Uh, and I don't know if it rewards that. It does. I don't know if it rewards you kind of like off the jump. Uh, but it will reward investment. I guess that'll be my, my my ultimate thing about this. You mean like overall, you have to like try to turn the engine over a couple times, and then you can try. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta that's the seat. <laughs> it's a... You gotta fix enough bots to get the factory going, and then it's great. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Um, and then I will do an official ranking, I think, after it's Ultimion yeah. comes out, right? Mm -hmm. But um, Ult Ultima? how do you... Ultima? I don't know. Something. Is there Instinctively, any... how do you feel that this one stacks with other Oniverse games? So my ranking is going to be a little bit different. Uh, and I had that comment on one, on, on one of the video we did a couple of years ago. Like, they they watched our thing. This was after Arion, I think. Uh, and they're like, this Rhythm doesn't help me at all. Yeah. This this ranking is so different than every, everybody else's ranking. That's a good thing, people. <laughs> you know, I think some people want to be like, okay, watch a video, see the ranking. It's like you know, there's an officialness to it, and then that's it. No, that's 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 um, we all come at it from a very very different perspectives. So um, I include that shuffled together aspect. I don't know, not a lot of, yeah. not a lot of people do. So given the, I'm not as impressed by the base game, but I really am into the, the big, the bigger game. It is, it does kind of like come in the middle. I'd probably put it like four right now. Yeah. I was going to say probably top half, but mm -hmm. not like top two, you know? Right. Yeah. This, so this one, this one won't make the top two. No. Yeah. At least right, for, for now. I can for change now. my mind and, a few years. Like my uh, ranking yeah, systems are like, you know, it's very, it's, they're variable. What mood am I in today? But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll have plenty of time. So we have Erbion, the new Erbion coming later this year. We're recording 2024. And then we'll have yeah. Altimion or Altamon or whatever it's called. We're, good. We're definitely going to figure out the answer to that one when it comes. Uh, so there's only two <laughs> more. And then at that time, we will give, we will do the big video and do the big ranking. And we'll oh, yeah. give our final judgment and all that stuff. Yes, the judgment must be given. <laughs> <Okay>. um, <laughs> but um, I, I do want to say overall, if you are a solo gamer who has liked Oniverse games in the past or who wants to try one in this, I think this would be a perfectly decent entry into the series. Sure. Um, you know, it's if you are looking for a chilled out solo game, it has two player roles that I didn't bother with, um, oh, yeah. with interesting art and that's conceptually interesting. And it has lots of little expansions. It's going to like take up a good amount of your time. And it's like worth the 25 bucks because you get a lot of game out of it. I think Siberian is very much there. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's, you just described all the universe games in a way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, like um, does, what is, how, how does Siberian kind of like, like if I, pick one to enter with it would not be Siberian but I think it does reward like you know now once you're already in the Oniverse system it this does give you something different and it does give you something yeah. good in its own way yes yeah so totally worthy entry in the series um you know if you're gonna start with one do you still recommend Oniram as just the starter yeah um I think I mean, it's I mean, an yeah, app it's easy to get I always think of uh, our buddy Kevin Erskine uh, from of Top 100. He hates Oni Room with a with a patch of a fire or sun. Uh, <laughs> he, like he hates it. I, I mean, he cannot just stop. Every time someone even sniffs the word Oniverse or uh, you know, mentions it, he's like, "No, this game stinks." And blah blah. Uh, so I always think of that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's everything is so centered around like a mechanism. So it's like a worker placement, a dice game, uh, whatever. Uh, like if you like dice, I like Arion. You know, Ariana's um, the, the the simple game is like okay, you got the you know you're rolling your Yahtzee dice. Uh, yeah. So if so that would so uh, to me that would be your entry if you're into that. Uh, if you're into like I wish Ariana was better. <laughs> I'm not, not Ariana. <laughs> um, I keep on messing up. Sylveon. Um, so I would. Yeah, the, the I, I actually. Fits. I want it to be Sylveon. Like I want Sylveon to be good. And I, I and I don't know if if um, Shaddy is either happy with Sylveon or you know. Like I said before, I feel like the game yeah, is kind of like tighter, you know, yeah. uh, recently. So like, I do really feel like if he had another crack at Sylveon, that he would, that it would be a better game, and I would like it more because I like Tower Defense. And 
I think tower defense, like that plant for a zombies thing, like that's perfect. Entry it it really level is. stuff. You know, it's so simple. It's like, okay, enemy here. Here's something you care about on the other side. Defend it. And so, like, it could be Sylvia on that entry point, but I wish it was a little bit attuned a little bit better. Uh, these yeah. two, the last two, Stellarion and Siberion, are not entry level. Like, you need to know basic concepts yeah. and, you know, uh, it, and have played similar games in order to get into these. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, it would probably be Oni Rim, but, you, you know, uh, yeah. Kevin Erskine's <laughs> asterisk. <laughs> well, if you don't like rankings are different. This is frustrating. I'm kidding. <laughs> right. But um, no. So uh, just to kind of sum it up, y'all, Siberian is a totally solid entry into the series. It has its own vibe like they all do, but it also yeah. shares what they all share, which is quirky art, lots to work with in the box, lots of nice little expansions. Um, and if you're experienced with solo gaming, I don't expect you're gonna have any problems picking it up. If it's your yeah. very first solo game, maybe go with Onirim or Sylvia. Any last thoughts, Jason? We're good to go. <laughs> all right, so thank you so much for watching, everybody. Please like, subscribe, comment, ask questions, and most of all, happy gaming. Later, everybody. <laughs>